Hey guys and welcome back to Newegg TV. My name is Paul. Today I'm doing an unboxing and overview of this new video card from ASUS. This is the ASUS Radeon R9 280X DirectCU2 Top. We shall begin with a closer look at the retail box. This is a DirectCU2 card, so ASUS has custom designed the cooler as well as the PCB on this one. Uh, DirectCU is direct copper contact, which is the copper heat pipes that make contact with the GPU to more efficiently wick the heat away from it out into the aluminum fin array and help disperse your heat nice and quickly. This is the top overclocked edition, which means it's going to be running at uh, 1070 megahertz on the GPU boost clock as opposed to the 1000 megahertz of the reference uh, Radeon R9 280X. So it's got a 3 gigabyte GDDR5 memory frame buffer. You get Digi Plus VRM, so digital power delivery, as well as super alloy power componentry. They've gone with a 10 phase power delivery system for this card. You also get access to the ASUS GPU tweak software utility, so you can use that to tweak and tune the card from within the operating system. It's uh, quite fantastical utility. You can see a little screenshot of it right up there and uh, a new feature that they've integrated into that is online streaming. So uh, not only can you modify, modify the clock speeds and voltages and fan performance and all that good stuff, but you can also use that to do online streaming, which is totally rad if you like to play games and stream them online. It's a little bit more information about the Digi, Digi Plus VRM digital power delivery, uh, which is going to give you 30% power noise reduction, as well as the Super Alloy po Power SAP uh, chokes, caps, and MOSFETs that they're using to feed power to the GPU as well as to the memory. And there's uh, another closer look at the DirectCU2 cooler, which is 20% cooler and three times quieter than the reference design for the R9-280X. That's uh, about it for the box. I did want to point out really quickly over here some uh, detailed specifications, the system requirements right there. I'm sorry, the text is very small, but uh, basically you want to make sure that you have a PCI Express connector, of course. Uh, Gen 3 is recommended, although it is backwards compatible with Gen 2, and uh, they're recommending a minimum 750 watt power supply for this particular card. That's for your entire system. Inside the retail box, we have more retail boxes. This little packet here contains your accessories for this card. You're first off going to get a driver and software disk. Um, chances are you've got updated versions of both the driver from AMD as well as maybe even the GPU tweak software from ASUS. So you can go to the AMD website and the ASUS website to download updated versions of this software. The disk is still there if you like loading stuff from an optical disk. And uh, you also get the ASUS speed setup. This is a generic installation guide for installing a graphics card and kind of taking you through the vagaries of that. Um, you can also check out our How to Build a Computer video if you're interested in a more hands-on tutorial. And it looks like that's all for accessories, so let's move on to the card. So let us begin with the tr traditional video card measurement, just so you can make sure it's going to fit in your chosen computer case. So measured from the bracket right there down to the end of the uh, heat shroud, uh, about 11 and a quarter, a little bit over 11 and a quarter inches actually. So I'd say give yourself 11 and a half inches to make sure that this is going to fit in your computer case. Uh, now let's talk about some of the, uh, the, the parts of the card here. We'll start with the DirectCU2 cooler since that's right here up front. You get a metal shroud going over the enti entire cooler right here. Black and metal with some red highlights going on uh, which is going to match well black and red quite nicely if you're installing this along with an ASUS ROG board that's going to look perfect. Uh, and then you notice you have two fans here. They're both 95 millimeters however this one looks a little bit different. This is their Cooltech fan. So basically if you're looking at fans that they implement on graphics cards you have a uh, this kind of fan, which is kind of your more standard style fan. Then you might see what is traditionally known as a blower style fan, which is kind of the round one with the fins. It looks kind of like the inside of this Cooltech fan. Basically, the Cooltech fan is combining elements of the blower style fan as well as your traditional style fan to provide uh, greater heat dissipation, but uh, basically more downward firing uh, air to go across those fins. But also the blower style part at the beginning is going to be pushing air crossways this way and this way, which is the direction that the fins are uh, angled at. If you're wondering why they're not doing the Cooltech fan on both of those, it's because this actually pushes air this direction and having two of those uh, side by side would create more turbulence than is necessary. So they opted to go with the single one and that uh, was the best cooling situation in their testing 
over at Asus. Here's a look at the side of the card. This is uh, probably the view that you're going to have when it's installed in your computer if you have a traditional style motherboard layout and maybe a, a side window. Uh, but you do get a nice DirectCU2 logo down here at the end. Uh, and then you also get a great view of this heat pipe. Look at that heat pipe right there. That's a 10 millimeter heat pipe. And believe it or not, there really aren't many 10 millimeter heat pipes out there, particularly that are implemented in graphics card cooling solutions. Uh, but Asus is telling us that this heat pipe actually uh, wicks away or, or, or can handle a TDP about 40% higher than an 8 millimeter heat pipe. So they're getting a lot of efficiency there. That's not the only heat pipe on the card, though. You'll notice four more heat pipes coming out here, some 6 mil and 8 millimeter heat pipes as well. So there's a total of five. All of those are going over and making direct contact with the GPU, which is underneath this area right here. And then the heat pipes go out to the fin arrays. You can see the fin arrays down there underneath the fans. The fans blow air across them. And that is how graphics cards stay cool. Some other elements of this card that I happen to like and I think are pretty well designed. Uh, first off, you got a support bracket right here. So this is coming up and making contact right at this point, which is the same point where you bolt the card to your case. So that's going to provide plenty of uh, support and sturdiness and rigidity for this section of the PCB because um, you can have some weight to these cards, particularly with the more advanced cooling, solution that's clo cooling solutions uh, that they've gone with. So having that uh, support there is definitely going to be a help. Also over along this side of the card, uh, you can see your crossfire fingers right there. Uh, this card is capable of two-way, three-way, and four-way crossfire configurations. So that's pretty cool if you're into uh, high-end GPU configurations. And given that this card, the 280X, even though it's uh, pretty much very akin to the 7970X, is coming in at a much lower price point and actually better performance. So that's pretty cool too. If you go uh, down to the other end of the card down here, you will notice your uh, power connection points. So you have an 8-pin and a 6-pin PCI Express graphics power connectors. So make sure you've got those available on your uh, power supply. And again, 750-watt power supply minimum is what ASUS uh, is recommending for this card right out of the box. Um, another thing down here on this end, which uh, you can kind of see, is these little connection points. These are actually uh, contact points. They do require soldering, but that's your ROG Connect contact points. Those are available right there. Uh, so for higher-end folks who are maybe going to be going, doing some exotic cooling or some crazy overclocking, you do have those available to you as well. Just bear in mind, some work may be required on your part to get those solder, uh, soldered connections uh, set up properly to connect over to your multimeter or uh, ROG connection point if you're going to be pairing this with an ROG Connect capable motherboard. Uh, the PCB on the back, which you've been looking at this whole time but I haven't mentioned yet, is a very nice kind of flat black color, which I find is also quite nice since you get a really uh, good view of this when it's installed in the case. And then Asus is continuing the, uh, the theme, or their, their, their tradition, I suppose, for the DirectCU2 coolers of making them very easy to remove. So you'll notice four Phillips head screws right there. Those are the only four screws you would need to remove in order to rem uh, pop off this entire upper portion of the card and that entire cooler. So that's also great if you ever need to clean the card out or if uh, you are going to be removing this to add a water block or do some exotic cooling solutions. Uh, PCI Express Gen 3 is the compatibility that uh, you've got right here with your PCI Express connection point. Again, it is backwards compatible with the PCI Express Gen 2. Uh, so don't worry if you're using an older motherboard. You can still install this and you'll still get about 99% of the performance that you uh, would, might otherwise get with PCI Express Gen 3. Over here at the back, you have your video outs. Uh, you also have a bit more ventilation, so some air can push out the back of your case, which is always nice to have. Uh, you got a DisplayPort 1.2, HDMI 1.4, then you got a couple dual link uh, DVI connections as well. Uh, the bottom one here is a uh, DVI-I, so digital and analog. The top one here is DVI-D, so digital only. So if you are going to be using a DVI to VGA adapter for an older monitor, use it with the lower port right there. And that's going to wrap it up for this video, guys. Once again, we've been taking a closer look at the ASUS AMD Radeon R9 280X DirectCU2 Top video card. I'm Paul with Newegg TV. If you enjoyed this video or found it useful or informative or entertaining or just like to click buttons, click some of these buttons that are down there. We got like, we got dislike, we got comments. If you want to leave me a comment, go ahead and do so. I encourage it. But thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.